Uh, just this morning, we have concluded the executive council. This was after uh, we had an independent review team. We had the deputies meeting. We had their agency bosses meeting. All of them made a unanimous recommendation to the executive council, of which it's my responsibility as the chairman to accept or not those recommendations. And based on the data, we have decided, NASA unanimously, in our decision makers, to move forward with the current Artemis II Orion capsule and heat shield with a modified entry trajectory. Uh, later on, they'll get into the specifics of how you modify the entry so that you lessen the heat coming back into the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, additionally, we need to complete our updates to the in Orion environmental controls and the life support systems that were identified earlier this year. And that's a very important part, the ECLIS system the life support system of Artemis II needs to be checked out. That's a very important goal and accomplishment before we go translunar injection to the moon. And so we are planning for Artemis II to launch in T30. We need to get this test flight right. Uh, need to get this test flight right. Uh, this Artemis II test flight right to ensure the success of our return to the moon and then return safely to Earth in order for the rest of the Artemis campaign to proceed. We've made tremendous progress on the Artemis campaign, including establishing the Moon to Mars program, defining strategies and objectives through our regular architecture concept reviews, launching and learning from the first test flight, Artemis I, developing our suits, the space suits, that our astronauts will wear on the surface of the moon, and awarding two contracts to develop human lander systems. Space is demanding, and we and our industry and international partners need this time to make sure that the Orion capsule is ready to safely deliver our astronauts to deep space and back to Earth.